r slash ask reddit what fact totally change your perspective if you have a problem and you completely lose your head over it you now have two problems edit hey thanks for the shiny stuff i would like you to speak to my dad please hey son you're adopted the longest a nicotine craving will last is 180 seconds that means all i need to do is resist for three minutes my last cigarette was the 25th of January 2008. The 21st of July 2014. Stay strong. You've still got this. There are planets out there without suns. Planets that are hurtling through space in absolute total darkness. Imagine being there. When people drive drunk in the countryside they'll sometimes drive without lights on in order to avoid being spotted in the distance by cops. I feel like there's a comparison to be made between these people and your hurtling planets. Knowing that the way someone treats you is often a reflection of their own problems or issues and quite possibly has nothing to do with you. Edit. Thank you for the gold. Some of the best advice I've heard is, sometimes you just end up as collateral damage in someone's war with themselves. You're gonna get hurt and treated unfairly just because they've got their own issues and sometimes you just have to take it on the chin. We judge others on their actions, but ourselves on our intentions. I remember reading that the right question to ask is not am I a good person, it's what good do I do in the world. When I started thinking about it that way, I realized I wasn't actually a very good person. I have time to waste on reddit, then my life is not that bad. Greetings from the land of the money poor, time rich. If there's one thing I've learned about myself, it's that I'd rather have a lot of time than a lot of money, as long as I'm not actually poor, meaning that I can buy food and pay my bills without having to stress it, I'm pretty content. Having to save a bit to buy something is fine by me, I once did work a lot and earned a lot of money, compared to now at least. But I was really unhappy because I never had enough time to do what I wanted. The majority can be wrong. Very very wrong. Changed my outlook on the world completely. I wondered why Lord of the Flies was a major literature in my grade 6 year. I was too young then to care but eventually it started to make sense. Democracy done in haste decisions for a short term benefit made by uninformed masses and swayed by a charismatic leaders or just unknown fears can be destructive, sometimes tragic. I learned that one while reading To Kill a Mockingbird. The Mythbusters didn't get along, you could see it a bit in the show, but I didn't really know the extent of it, edit, didn't clarify before, just Jamie and Adam, not the rest of the crew. My mother watched one episode of Mythbusters when it was still active. She told me they did not really like each other. I thought she was wrong. Like how could they not like each other? They work together making one of the greatest shows on earth. Turns out rule number one still applies. Mom is always right. That no one cares. Really. When you find yourself laying in bed at night anxious about every interaction you've had that day. What you said. If someone's angry with you etc. Just know that no one cares, and likely no one is thinking negatively about you at all. Everyone has their own life to deal with, and that really helped me stop worrying about everything at night. Time doesn't stop. That speech I'm about to give in front of my class and I'm sweating balls over. In the next two minutes, it's going to be done with. Two minutes is two minutes. This has helped me so very much in life. I always tell myself the same thing. This time tomorrow, it'll be in the past, a distant memory, I've just got to get through it, but it will be over, I hope your speech went well. If you shuffle a standard deck of cards, it is most likely the only time that sequence of cards has ever been shuffled in the history of cards. I am not a very good shuffler. You have an increased chance of getting murdered or committing suicide if you win it big in the lottery. And I think the chances are increased quite dramatically. People probably aren't always judging your every move. Better yet, if you're in your own head about others possibly judging you, just consider that most others aren't judging you because they're too busy in their own heads, worrying that you're judging them. There will always be more things that need to get done than I have time for. The world moves on with or without us. Edit. Thank you kind stranger for the silver. Yeah, shit, I remember the first time I really traveled to another country, 
whilst I was walking around it suddenly hit me that all the people were just living their lives. It sounds so stupid because of course that's what they were doing. But it's the first time it really hit me how many people in the world just live their lives oblivious of us. It sounds like a super downer sort of thing but it made me feel so insignificant. In the grand scheme of things the things I do just won't matter. Literally no one cares. It gave me a new lease on life. I find myself not caring as much about the small stupid things as much. And when I feel sad I just think of those people living so far away just living their lives and it snaps me out of it pretty quickly. I'm capable of being entirely convinced of something false. As a result anything I'm convinced of doesn't necessarily reflect reality. The one thing we all had in common is that we all think we're right. Now you've gone and ducked it up. Most people are too wrapped up in their own lives and insecurities to focus on your little stumbles. Try to think of other people's embarrassing moments. It's actually quite hard to do. And if I do think of something, I don't dwell on it or give it more than a fleeting thought. It's usually no big deal. It's kind of nice to know that no one really gives a shit and maybe that one cringy thing I once said isn't actually that big of a deal. Related note, when I realized that I would never talk to someone the way I talk to myself, it was a little light bulb moment. Self-compassion is a long road. Edit. To thank you for the golden to say. I'm sorry that not everyone is kind and that some of you are stuck in environments where people do make you feel small. I'm not discounting that or saying that it doesn't happen. I just think that it's maybe part of a different conversation. I'm also not endorsing not giving a duck about other people. My whole and only intention was just to nudge you in the direction of being a bit gentler on yourself. Related note, when I realized that I would never talk to someone the way I talk to myself, it was a little light bulb moment. Self-compassion is a long road. I learned to treat myself the way I treat my nieces. When they make a mistake do I talk down to them? Nope. I encourage them to do better next time. Do I ever call them out of their name for any reason? Nope. So I can't do that to myself. Do I constantly point out their flaws to them and make them feel bad about them? Nope. So I'm also not allowed to do that to myself. And so on. It changed my life for the better. It gets hard sometimes. But then I have to realize I can't be a bully to myself. It's not fair to me and I don't deserve that. It took mankind 4 times longer to switch from copper swords to steel swords than to switch from steel swords to nuclear bombs. The pyramids of Giza were about as old to the ancient Romans as the ancient Romans are to us right now. Really shows how short human history has been. I find that including the name Cleopatra can help drive the point home further. Since that, and Tut, are the names often associated with ancient Egypt. There was more time between Cleopatra's life and the construction of the pyramids than between Cleopatra's life and today. Also, the same fact applies to the T-Rex. We are closer to the T-Rex than the T-Rex was to the Stegosaurus. That a simple interaction with a stranger can make their day, or yours. The deepest mine is about 2.5 miles. If the earth was an apple, humans haven't drilled far down enough to even pierce the skin. The Kola Super Deep Borehole is about 7.5 miles deep. And it collapsed from heat and pressure despite being just 9 inches in diameter. We're not going to have a tunnel to China anytime soon. Can't remember exactly where I saw this, but the first western movies filmed in Hollywood were made around 1915, when the industry moved there. At the time much of the area outside of Los Angeles was ranchland and there were still some sizable cattle drives going on. Directors would hire actual cowboys for a pittance to train horses or be extras. Basically they made movies fantasizing these big cattle drives and gunfights as American history. While people who had actually done all those things IRL were chilling in the background. Friends don't last forever. My mindset for this is that just because friends don't last forever, that doesn't mean the memories and feeling we have for each other don't. I still thankful that they were there, at least for a while. There are real life castles that are less expensive to buy than a New York City apartment. You can actually get a free castle in France as long as you can provide a plan for how to keep up with upkeep of the castle so that it won't become a ruin. Among several TV shows about castles in France, I remember hearing about people who just couldn't afford to keep the castle they already owned. Not because of taxes or mortgages, just upkeep costs.
I imagine the archers and trebuchet costs start getting pretty steep after a while. Maybe the people that you think don't like you think you don't like them. A lot of people think I hate them. Truth is, I have a hard time opening up to people so I push them away even though I do like them. This fact is super relevant to tomorrow. Martin Luther King Jr. and Anne Frank were born the same year. Blows my mind whenever I think of it. Edit. I wrote this on Sunday, just to clarify the tomorrow comment. Abraham Lincoln and Charles Darwin were both born on the 12th of February 1809. How strong gravity is at a neutron star? If you were to stand on top of one, you'd be flattened at the subatomic level. What's really cool, is that it wouldn't just crush you, it would crush you so hard that the molecules that make up your body would stop obeying what we typically think of as fundamental laws of particles. Everyone goes on about black holes. Neutron stars are cool as shit. Black holes are just eerie. There is this very big number called Graham's number. The entire freaking universe does not have enough space or atoms for you to write down every digit. Just make it a smaller font size silly. And single space. 1000 seconds equals 16 minutes 1 million seconds equals 11 days 1 billion seconds equals 32 years. I don't believe you. I'm going to start counting right now to fact check this. I will report my findings when I have finished. Remind me in 32 years. Everywhere in the universe looks like the center of the universe. A 12 ounce can of soda pop has 20 packets of sugar in it. Duck, I should be dead. My fly being down during the presentation I thought I nailed. Don't be ridiculous. That is why you nailed it. We can't say no to someone with balls that big. If cats were our size and we were their size they would not even hesitate for a moment to kill and eat us. After playing with us, I now understand my cats better. It would only play with you if it was a domestic cat. Feral cats don't play with their prey when hungry. They quickly and efficiently kill it within seconds to waste as little energy as possible. Well that's comforting, I guess.